Hello and welcome to another Scholar Progenium Battle Report. Uh, today we have quite a big uh, large scale battle report for you. Uh, we have a Marine off. Uh, the new Space uh, Marine Codex is coming down. Uh, so we're going to see how the new Marines, uh, Black Templars, face off against the pure infantry uh, Red Tide list. So uh, you should be quite familiar with this list if you've seen some of my uh, other bat reps, but I'll just take you through it very briefly. We have uh, three squads of five tactical marines with a plasma rifle. We have three squads of five tactical marines. Uh, two sergeants have a power axe and bolter, and one has a, a chainsword and bolter. Uh, and the rest just bare bones, no special weapons in there. Uh, we have a sanguinary ancient. He's technically an elite, but he's uh, also a character, so I've got him in with these guys. We've got a chaplain with jump pack. We've got our new uh, smash captain. We've got Baron Harkonnen, our old smash captain, Mephiston, of course, and finally a lieutenant, he's actually got a power sword. Um, in terms of our elite sections, we also have 13 Death Company with two power, uh, four power swords and two thunder hammers. So looking forward to using those with the plus one extra attack. Um, I haven't got the Sanguinor in this list, I haven't swapped it out that much, but uh, I think they'll still be really brutal with that plus one attack. Now we've got seven Sanguinary Guard, only seven this time, uh, but with three attacks each they should still pile up quite a lot of hurt for their model count. And then what are we facing off against today? Well we've got the Black Tide here. We have you know, roughly a hundred uh, Black Templar Crusaders. Um, now they uh, will be making use of the new uh, rules in the, uh, in the Space Marine Codex. So as Black Templars they get to re-roll one or both dice on the charge and they have a five up feel no pain against mortal wounds. Now it's a bit weird because they can actually use tactical doctrines despite Black Templars being known for really not following the Codex Astartes at all. And in the law, the Blood Angels actually adhere probably much more closely. Yeah, they've got the Death Company, but they're unofficial if you think about it. They're actually just standard Marines on the books. Mm. You know, they've just turned, they've got the Black Rage. So they don't really have the Sanguinary Guard, nothing too fancy about having some fancy armour for your uh, First Company veterans. Uh, so, you know, all in all, uh, this they will be making use of the Tactical Doctrine, so that means in the first turn, they'll start off with AP minus one on their bolters uh, and heavy, heavy weapons. Yeah, it's just on the heavy weapons. Just on heavy weapons, sorry. Then in the second turn, they can switch it up so they're AP minus one on uh, rapid fire weapons. And then if they want to, after that, they can switch it up one more time to go AP minus one on close combat weapons, which I think Tim will be rushing to do as soon as the third turn comes about. So Tim, do you want to take us through your list in a little more detail? Because you have changed up a little bit over little, time. Yeah, a little bit. So um, I've got three, uh, four shooty squads of Crusaders. So two of them have got um, uh, nine men in, two neophytes, and the rest are initiates and there's a sword brother. Both of those squads have got a combi grav, a plasma gun and a heavy bolter. Okay. And the rest have got bolters. And then over here it's very similar but it's was 10 man squads this time. Uh, and they've got uh, combi, plasma, plasma gun and heavy bolter. Okay. Uh, then we have the choppy uh, crusader squads. I've got six of them. These three here are all identical. Uh, combi, plasma, power sword, plasma gun. Okay. And these are a little bit more mix and matched. So we've got one which has got uh, Power Fist, Combi, uh, Melter, another Power Fist, and a Melter Gun, and then the rest have got Bolt Pistol on Close Combat Weapon. This squad here has got a guy with Dual Lightning Claws and uh, Power Sword and a Melter Gun, and then this squad here has got a Combi Flamer, Power Sword, Power Axe, and a Flamer, and then everyone's got Bolt Pistol on Close Combat Weapon. Like um, five near fights in each of those. Five near fights in each of the uh, close combat squads, and then there's actually a lot more power armor in the shooting squads. You'll notice there's actually only two near fights in each mm -hmm. one of those, and there's an extra couple of power armor dudes because I tend to find those guys dug into cover with the extra bit of power armor makes them quite difficult to dislodge. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. Um, we've got a captain with a storm bolter and a power sword. We've got another captain with a storm shield and a power sword. We've got the Empress Champion. Uh, we have a lieutenant. He has just got a uh, Mastercrafter bolter and a uh, power sword. 
and he will be wearing my uh, Crusader Helm relic, which gives me the extra three inch bubble on my uh, auras. Then I've got two chaplains. Um, this one will be uh, my Warlord, and he'll have the Warlord trait where people are fearless around him. And uh, they've got the new Litanies of Hate. So this guy, they both know the lit they both know the Litany of Hate, which is on a three up, everyone gets to reroll hits in combat. That's the the old one. And they both know one of the new ones as well. So this guy will know the Canticle of Hate. So he's very hateful, this guy. And the Canticle of Hate means he gets plus two to the charge range to units around him. Okay. And the other one will get, I believe it's the Litany of Faith, it is, which means units around him will have a six plus feel no pain. The reason I've, I've varied... Six up feel no pain. Uh, five up feel no pain, sorry, within six inches. Uh, the reason I've, I've varied that, I'd love to have feel no pain on both of them, but you could, it's like a psychic power, you can only do one litany of each type of turn. Okay, fair enough. Right, cool. So we've got a 2,000 point uh, infantry off. It's very sort of 30k-esque, a bit of horror ha Horus Heresy going on here. Though obviously the Black Templars didn't exist at that point. But yeah, 31K. we'll... Uh, 31k. <laughs> but we'll be... Uh, we are playing... What is it? Storm the Beaches or Beachhead Assault or whatever uh, it's called. It's, beach, it's Beachhead and we're playing on the Dawn of War, which is the pointy Dawn of War. So you start six inches, six inches, mm. and then nine inches. From so the here we have the field of battle after deployment. Now, as you'll see, I have gone with some rather unconventional tactics here because I know uh, basically what Tim is planning because it is written all over A, his face, and B, the board. Um, I have decided to put my hardcore units sort of within stomping range so that when Tim inevitably goes first, or if, even if I steal, I'll be able to jump my black uh, death company forward. Essentially, Tim's got all his infantry here. So he's got choppy guys on this flank. He has a row of choppy guys all around the front. And then the sort of back four squads, one, two, three, four, are bolter bros. Are they, what squad are they a part of? They, they're trickle down. Okay. Um, and then he has three servitors at the back to give him fearless, even though who cares because he's space marines and we know no fear. And um, I he know, has I don't even know a about couple of chaplains it. here, or a chaplain there and some other dude. Yeah. And then he's got his Emperor's Champion here, which as any good Blood Angels player knows, this Emperor's Champion is the absolute bane of our existence because he is really good when he's in combat with characters. So on the Blood Angel side, apart from, you know, Starting off with my death company behind this berm and my terminators and smash captain Mephi uh, on the field here. I also have my chaplain on the left, my sanguinary ancient there, and then I have a whole bunch of tactical marines here. 30 tactical marines in total. I could cram 25 in there, couldn't quite fit the last five in my deployment zone. Uh, and then we've got Baron Harkonnen with them and uh, a lieutenant just there pointing. Reroll ones at those guys. So, um, yeah, basically, I will try and roll to steal initiative, but otherwise, Tim's going first. So, come on, Angry Commissar. No, it's a five. So. Just, uh, I'll do my litany of chaplinness. Okay. I will do the um, three plus, I will get a five plus feel no pain. Okay. Nope. So, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I can, use, I don't know if I can use a CP on that, but I don't know, I probably can, it's not a mission dice, is it? So, I'll use a CP on that. So I get it. Yeah, because it's it's uh it's before the beginning of the mm. turn. So it was a very effective turn for the uh, Black Templars uh, as they started off. So uh, this squad and this squad advanced and they managed to get off a couple of plasma shots, overcharged, and one melter shot into the Termes. I could just not pass a storm shield save, and even using a command point, uh, I lost two Terminators. Couldn't believe it. Uh, then his firing continued to be effective. Uh, you know, he was getting just like no failed hits or wounds at one point, like, you know, just absolutely crazy. He's got a lot of buffs and rerolls in there, so that should help him. But uh, overall, the Black Templars were just hot and spicy dice for the first turn. Uh, and that resulted in me losing a guy from a squad down here, a full squad here, and then he rounded off the turn with a Hellfire shot, which got three mortal wounds into another squad that he could just reach. Um, with a heavy bolt out and moving, the rest, the rest of the squad couldn't shoot, so I was like, ah, oh, finally, should die down, but lost three more guys. So it's been a really effective <coughs> turn, but he has uh, moved forward, and the other thing is, the threat of Terminator, you know, they have done their job in many ways, because Tim was very afraid, and the Death Company being on, of moving on to this objective here, because he thought, I'll move on to it, but then she get killed straight off it, 
uh, and I won't get any points at the start. Uh, you know, at the start of his uh, second turn. So we thought there's no point. I'll just stay back and he'll try and counter punch me. So let's see what the Blood Angels can do in their turn one. So as you can see, after Blood Angels turn one, I almost said Death Company turn one then, because it was basically all about the Death Company. Um, there's been a big chunk of the Black Templars. Uh, wiped out as you can see over here. This is Tim's dead pile here. So a lot of black templars. How many? About 25, 30 ish 30 guys dead. Yeah, three squads. Three squads dead, give or take. So I only actually killed three guys in shooting. Tim's rolls carried on and it was getting absolutely infuriating. You know, you're just having one of those games where you're just trying to keep a brave face on, you're trying to not ruin the game by getting stressed out, but you're just like, for God's sake, man, just. Fail a roll for the love of the Emperor. But anyway, eventually, after only killing three guys in the shooting phase, with like, you know, 22 shots from my Death Company rapid firing, like 30 rapid fire bolter shots, give or take, because I've, I've taken casualties, various plasma, you know, really fell flat on its face. Uh, I'd moved the Death Company up here, and I moved all my characters over here, because that keeps them nice and safe, give or take away from the Empire's Champion, and if he does want to charge him, fine, because you're going to have to take on three characters on one, because I'll heroically intervene, because they're all protecting each other. So, you know, it's not a fight I would want to get into, even if I was the Emperor's Champion. Well, maybe I would want to get into it, but I wouldn't expect to win it. Uh, the Death Company then charged in, they charged, I, even though I was only a five inch charge away from the front rank, I decided to use 3d6, because I can fit in the gap with the squad behind. Then I put, uh, Two thunder hammers, a chainsword, and a power sword on the squad behind, and everyone else on the squad in front. And the thunder hammers, power, uh, power sword, and chainsword did what they should have done. I'd got unleash rage off with Mephiston um, and uh, quickening on himself. Uh, so they, so the thunder hammers were putting out five attacks each. So ten thunder hammer attacks, five power sword attacks, and six chainsword attacks took this squad, the squad behind, uh, down to just two guys. Uh, the characters are charging over here, as I said, and they managed to essentially wipe the squad out that they were facing. But uh, Tim was clever and removed models from a fist and didn't actually get to charge it, get to charge. Um, so then after he struck back, I only had about four death company left. He got, you know, good hits and he had power, uh, power fists. And power fists, uh, five attacks actually took out my sanguinary ancient, which means I was lacking, and he interrupted to do that. So I was lacking my re-rolls to wound on everyone apart from the death company because they'd struck first. Uh, then I spent three command points to strike again with the Death Company and wiped out the squad that had uh, a couple of guys remaining. So all in all, the squad that these guys were fighting, uh, that were Fist and Wood kills, two guys from three guys from that squad got finished off, and the two remaining guys from that squad got finished off, and then the squad that was originally in front got wiped out just through mass chainsaw attacks. Um, I actually got 13 wounds through on power swords. I managed to, managed to fail two got re-rolls because of the chaplain, only hit, I hit with everything and then because of my wounding on threes and uh, I was had the Sanguinary Ancient at that point, I actually got a re-roll, uh, I only got, I got 13 wounds and I thought this is it, they're going to die straight away and Tim lost three guys because of his feel no pain, so that five of feel no pain on the chaplain, uh, yeah you have to roll for it but it is incredibly powerful mm. in incredibly powerful. I've been really struggling to kill stuff. He's even survived thunder hammer attacks by getting a triple five up on more than one occasion in just the first battle round. Mm. So, you know, it's really, really powerful that five up. But all in all, managed to kill um, 30 guys over here uh, and about a few more over here. Tim actually also spent three command points to strike again with this squad, but after failing loads of saves initially, they only lost one on Overwatch and didn't fail a single save for two rounds of combat. So we did balance out in the end, you know, uh, got those saves when I needed to on the Thunder Hammers, because if that squad had died, uh, Tim really would have all the shooting just powering into these characters. But a uh, lot of options there here for Tim tactically. Uh, the Death Company, they've managed to keep me treading water with that first turn assault. Uh, so we'll see what Black Templars can do in their turn two. And you've no reserves coming on, have you? One might say it was a... Shock assault. It could, could be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, the one other thing I would say is uh, the Death Company lost one guy 
um, because they rolled a one and they were within six into the chaplain. Uh, and they, these guys had consolidated, not actually tagging this unit because I didn't want him to pile in uh, just quite close, but tagging the unit over here so that they couldn't shoot. Uh, they got three attacks on me but failed to kill me. Uh, so they stayed tagged, so this squad won't be shooting, and that is legal because I removed him in the battle shock phase. Mm. So, all in all, you know, another successful turn under the belt for the Astartes. It's a very good game for Astartes mm. uh, in general. Uh, we'll see what Black Templars can do in their turn two. So, after a very long second turn for the Black Templars, they've done what they need to do and cleaned house. But it took them a lot of command points and a lot of bodies to get there. So uh, he pulled out uh, with the squad that was in combat. These two squads, yeah. yeah. This, this squad here and this squad here. So this squad was in combat with the Death Company and he pulled, pulled out and round him. And this squad was in combat with the Terminators and he pulled out this way. So he's close to this objective now. I think he's in with one squad. That mm -hmm. squad's just out. Yeah. Uh, then he charged or he shot a load at the Termies and uh, he managed to kill two off. So there's one left uh, which he charged with this squad and uh, he just managed to stab him to death basically. Yeah. He came down to the last wound but got he got him. Um, so we were just saying, 21 attacks with combat blades from just seven near fights or you know, and a couple of chainsaw attacks I think possibly. Yeah. But imagine if that was turn three, AP minus one, it's just absolutely insane, it will be insanely powerful next turn. He didn't need it this turn though, killed him. Uh, my um, sort of ploy of sending my characters off to kill off the squad over here out of charge range of the Emperor's Champion uh, came off because uh, he was nine inches away with the Emperor's Champion he rolled, got a six, a five and a one decided to uh, use a re-roll um, but got a two uh, And but we were just thinking, you know, it's really useful he also used that over here, he got a four initially and got in and thought, well I'm safe so I'll re-roll one of the dice to make sure I can pile in and surround the Terminator. So it's really useful with that Black, Tem Black Templar has been able to reroll one or both dice. It's a, a huge change. Because if you get in with one dice, you can just use the other dice, reroll it, surround them if you need just to. Just flexible. So just flexible, really tasty. Uh, the Chaplain's Feel No Pain, obviously, was just coming into play loads over here because uh, Tim Conga lined a bit. But eventually, uh, after a a lot of shooting, he managed to kill off my captain. We got my captain down to one wound, and my fiston down to one, one wound. wound. Uh, then he charged in, uh, and he managed to kill the captain off yep. uh, with the first round of combat, and my fiston as well, also. Uh, then he, uh, then my uh, captain fought back and killed off a load of the squad. Uh, then his captain fought my captain and took him down to one wound. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It basically was on one wound. Uh, his captain spent three command points to fight again and killed my captain, but my captain spent two command points to fight again and killed off one of the two remaining squad here and the captain. Yeah. Uh, so the Hammer of Baal, giving him the... Uh, not, it's not minus one to hit with his Thunder Hammer. Makes a huge difference. Makes a huge difference. So the only remaining uh, from a captain and a squad... Uh, the only remaining guy in combat is this man here. Because mm. that was a separate squad that was back here that moved forward and charged into them. So uh, that was a you know a, a large investment. He lost nine guys and spent like a lot of command points a to lot, get there. Yeah. Uh, these guys um, just killed him. Uh, and so, so as I've mentioned, so that was basically it for the Black Templar turn. So they killed off a bunch of characters. Uh, they killed off three Terminators, but I kind of expected that and they are exposed, they are on the objective, but just with one squad. And I've got some reserves coming in now, so we'll see what we can do in Blood Angels turn two. But yeah, all in all, extremely tasty Space Marine Codex mm -hmm. so far. So the Sanguinary Guard, uh, deep struck in, honourably just inside this building here, reinforcing the Blood Angels castle. I'm being quite defensive in this game, which is not like me, but, um, you know, it's suiting the tactics of the game. Uh, Tim... Uh, I also deep struck these guys in here, which they're all in cover. On hindsight, it looks a little bit like they're out of place thinking about it. But at the time, I thought, if I can get a charge in here, I can move close to the objective. Um, so, uh, you know, they're, they're still threatening Tim's back objective, and he has only a few resources left. So he might have to sort of decide between defending his objective and taking mine, because he's still got a lot of these guys to get through. But when my elites are dead, 
and it goes down to Marine versus Marine, Tim will have the advantage because of all these crazy doctrines and that. So um, it's it's tricky. But I have killed a ton more Marines. So uh, the Sanguinary Guard did a bit of shooting, but you know that feel no pain just kept coming in. It's absolutely worth its weight in gold. Chaplains are going to go through the roof in points. I reckon they are mm. so valuable now. You know, get your chaplains crammed into your list right now. I'm telling you now, that five up feel no pain. Take two chaplains, give or three chaplains even. Give one five up feel no pain, one plus two charge range, and one. Uh, Reroll hits yeah. and you are going to be tearing stuff up. But yeah, so these guys deep struck in and they actually did a really good bit of shooting and blasted three of the guys on this objective. A couple of attack marines over here finished the job. Only if you could see, but it was all that was needed. Uh, so Tim's been taken off that, off that objective. So we remain on two all, uh, or we will do at the start of Tim's turn because he won't score that objective. So that was good. The Sanguinary Guard then charged in against the squad here and they chopped apart, I think, eight and uh, left one plasma guy there uh, in feel no pain range and of course range. and fearless range of course so he's not running anywhere uh, in other news my captain uh, sort of moved out 12 charged past the mass here into this squad here uh, but he fluffed his wounds did well in his hits of course fluffed his wounds uh, only killed three uh, fortunately the feel no pain just couldn't save them because he's got the four damage thunder hammer plus one wound because of the air uh, the warlord trait because he is my warlord uh, so you know Tim just couldn't and it made a big difference even when I flubbed it I still killed three so Tim has been passing you know more than a handful it is not uncommon for him to get three five ups on a feel no pain roll and I'm not saying that he's been looking I'm saying that it is doable if you put like 20 attacks on a squad it's going to keep coming up a couple of them are going to keep coming up so yeah it's 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 really powerful that feel no, feel no pain uh, and if I was Death Guard, I would be absolutely raging right now because basically the only benefit you have now is Toughness 5. And, you know, you haven't even got They Shall Know No Fear or anything like that. That Feel No Pain, I mean, it's just an auto-include. It's just an auto-include. Get your 5 up Feel No Pains on your Chaplains right now. And the command points to make sure it goes off. Uh, so then, long story short, yeah, this guy, these guys chopped these up. Uh, these guys struck again on the Captain. Did three wounds in total? I thought it was two. Did two. He's got Did three two. left. Oh, he's got three left. Tim, what have you got? About 30 Marines left on the field? Uh, and loads of characters. 10 man course. squad, 10 man squad, about 15 man squads, and then uh, about five. Yeah, I've got about 40% of the force left. 40% of the force left. But he's got all his champions, whereas I have burnt through most of mine holding off the assault. So I think this battle's only going to go one way. The new Space Marine Codex is looking really powerful, but it's a really fun game. So we're going to carry on playing it out, and uh, you never know. I could uh, win glory for the Emperor. At the moment, it's two all. We've both got first strike, and we've both got a point for our objective. Mm. So let's see turn three. Do you want to roll to see if you get your litanies of hate on camera? Not litanies of hate, whatever it's called. It is basically, yeah, litany of faith. Yeah. So you get five. Yeah. Five would feel no pain there. And he'll go for his uh, reroll hits in combat. Reroll hits in combat, and that's no, a fail. You're gonna command point. No, not command point, because you've only got two left, whereas I have none left. I spent my last two and getting no sanguinary garden. And Tim's just been burning through them. Yeah, started with eighteen. Just absolutely crazy. <laughs> Hi there, so we're at the end of the Black Templar Tim, but I just really wanted to just show, we don't normally do dice rolls on this channel, and Mordian doesn't do dice rolls on his channel really either, because we just like to keep our bat, bat reps, you know, short and snappy and a bit more narrative and sort of tactically descriptive. But I have just honestly said to Tim now, I've got to grab the camera, because people are just going to think I'm whinging when they, if I say I've had another turn of dice rolls. But I, honestly... You've never seen anything like it this game. Like Tim's codex, like do not get me wrong. The AP minus one, absolutely incredible. Feel no pain, absolutely incredible. It is his the, the new spaceman codex is powerful beyond measure. It is insane. Um but he doesn't need that help, he really doesn't. So I just roll my uh, power fist attacks. Basically, last thing, uh, I'll bring you up to uh, bring you up to scratch. So Tim fired uh, rapid fire overcharged plasma here. Uh, hit and wound and I failed both saves, so that was two guys dead. He did the same with Grav over here and killed another two guys. And then he did the same with this plasma guy, he was here and he's just jogged up. And uh, killed, I think, last two, yeah. the last two 
guys. So just three shots, three kills. He honestly can't. Tim brings a lot of special weapons, and you may think, or it's a it's a misconception with his Black Templar army, if you're not familiar with it, that it doesn't bring the anti-tank. Every squad has a couple of anti-tank weapons in there. You've got uh, power fists hidden in the mix as well. You know, it's got no problem. So I have, you know, I knew I was going to lose those Sangars, so no complaints there. But it was just a frustrating because he just went bang, bang, bang. And that meant he had all his other firepower. You know, I didn't have any saves to make. Uh, he didn't, the squad wasn't left with just two guys. Uh, you know, so it wasn't like he had to commit another squad. And it, when you get to this level of the game, when you're Marine on Marine, you know, really elite forces fighting against each other and you sort of really bloodied and battered each other. Uh, and you sort of have to, con you know, the sort of style that this game has become. When you just can efficiently murder stuff with a couple of squads and the rest of your army is left to do what they want, it can, it's really devastating. It turns the tide of the game, and that's what's happened this turn, essentially. So, uh, Tim was quickly able to dispatch these guys. He shot my captain with bolt pistols. I got five wounds through, and I uh, failed three of the saves, so I lost his last three wounds. So the captain just died flat out as well. And uh, Tim was feeling so confident, he, he had decided not to switch his... Uh, tactical doctrine because which I'm taking as a, a massive compliment in many ways my battle plan has come off I can't complain in any way because I've managed to what I want to do is hack down his assault squads his 60 assault based troops to the point where they would no longer be a threat against my lines and they just keep pushing into the center and keep getting pushed back and I've managed to effectively do that throughout the game but you know Tim so Tim decided right I'm gonna stick with the AP minus one on the bolters because then he knows in a long range firefight, once he's dispatched my elites, my tacks, my tactical marines will have no chance because we're about even numbers at this point. Uh, he's got maybe a couple of guys more than me, but his AP is minus one, uh, which is going to make a big difference. And he's got more special weapons than I do just because that's the way his list works. So just to explain sort of the lay of the land right now. So he charged in as his final, final move, uh, his final assault squad into my terminator that was sat here. And um, he'd already managed to kill three with shooting uh, because he had all his bolters and special weapons left over uh, to hammer into this squad. As I said, uh, the first three little snapshots just finished off all my remaining sanguinary guard. Uh, but I, the Emperor smiled down on me. He did about 14 wounds to me and I passed every single one, including five power sword wounds. So he's still getting all his hits and wounds through, like efficiently murdering me with his shock assault. But, uh, I, you know, I got my saves and I thought, yes, the look on the dice has changed. Rolled my responding attacks and that brings us back to this point here. This is my power fist attacks and I've managed to get one hit on a four up. So I thought I'd finish off the last of this turn, see if I can kill one of Tim's Black Templars with my one wound. And no. of course, <laughs> it is a one. Uh, so was... in the Blood Angels final turn, they advanced forward to within a six and, uh, five. It, and five inch charge of their opposing squads. Uh, I fired off some shots and managed to kill uh, about three Marines from this back squad. And then Tim lost a further Marine from Overwatch on this squad when I charged. And then of course I rolled a five on the squad that needed six inches and I rolled a four on the squad that needed five inches. So I failed to get both my uh, charges off. Uh, Tim then, uh, I struck over here uh, with seven attacks. Uh, was that seven? No, it's five, five, five now. now. Um, but uh, because they haven't, been charged or charged, this, all these units are currently engaged in combat so they don't get the plus one attack at this round. Um, and it was weird because most assaults have finished you know, in a round, that shows how lethal this new assault rule is, especially Marine on Marine, you know, Marines are a tough opponent to take on. Marine on Marine, you know, att attacks can go on for a couple of rounds, but not anymore. But uh, long story short, I uh, my Terminator decided not to lead me on with any kind of semblance of hope and uh, actually just failed all of their hits. So I didn't sort of have to think, oh, I might actually get a wound so out of, here. Out of so that 12, was that. I have 12 attacks, you have made one hit. One hit, I only got a one. So that was good. Uh, but fortunately, this just has devolved into a wet noodle fest uh, because I managed to at least make all my saves. So congratulations, Terminators. You are the squad that has made the most saves this game. Um, so yeah, I am literally, I'm just going to concede at this point. I know I never concede and it's like really not the way I play. Uh, and I don't want it to be a sort of disappointing end, but you, you know, we know the power of the, 
the new Space Marine Codex. Tim is shooting AP-1 on every bolter, which means that all of my Space Marines are exposed in the open and they'll be getting a 4-up save. So what we'll actually do is, um, I'm conceding now, but we will roll this out on camera so you can see, with the dice rolls, the bloody uh, hail of fire, almost like you know the last scene in The Last Samurai where the samurai charge forward and they just get gunned down hopelessly, uh, filled with holes. We'll do that now. So Tim, you know, he's very quick on his dice. He knows his uh, Black Templar army very well. So uh, just shoot squad by squad, and we'll see how quickly you tear these guys down. And yeah. I absolutely know now that I'm filming you, yeah. your dice are going to go to shit. But who cares? Right, let's do we'll, this. We'll break. assume everyone's a rapid fire because I'd either stay still or I'll move into. It. Yeah, so yeah, just, exactly. Just for, just Tim can get it. every single squad here either into 12 inches because that's only about 16 inches. So sometimes hard with perspective yeah. on camera, but it's not far at all. Yeah. Uh, and and everyone, everyone else is already in rapid fire. It'd be pretty easy to get everyone within the six inches of his bubble, nine inches of his bubble. So that and would that's be... the lieutenant who, I tell you what, guys, having the helm of command or whatever it's called on a lieutenant is a really good idea. Yeah. So that reroll ones across your army, really tasty. Anyway, yeah. so go ahead. You can Tim. take it on a primaire's lieutenant now in the new codex, so yeah. you're, so, which you'd always do because then you just have a tougher lieutenant. Yeah, you've got a tough lieutenant. He can bring it if they get into your lines, but most of the time he's just sat back there. It's easy to string squads into nine inches. Tim has not had, he, Tim has had reroll ones to wound on every single wound he's, he's struck mm -hmm. this game. Um, you know, as I've said, the dice have been in his favor, but I'm not putting it all down to the dice because, uh, you know, I'm rolling my own dice, so that's not Tim's fault. And Tim's list is extremely well distilled, extremely well constructed. All his buffs are very well thought out. His unit management is very well thought out. His sort of micromanagement of his army and his sort of grand strategy are all absolutely excellent with this force. So not to take anything away from Tim. And uh, with that new codex, I think it's just amplifying. It's just showing the dice gods have decided to just truly show you the power of the new Space Marine Codex with this bat rip. And that's kind of cool, isn't it? It's a new codex, we want to show it off. Mm. I kind of went into this thinking, well, Marine on Marine, new versus old, essentially is what it is. You know, I'm probably going to die, but let's see this happen. So yeah. let's do those final dice and cut down the last of the glorious uh, boys in red. So we'll start off with the squad at the back and we'll work our way forward. So this squad will fire all its bolters into the four-man squad. Uh, yeah, they're both four-man squads, aren't they? Yeah, both four-man squads and so two-man squads. All the bolters into this squad, all the specials into that squad. Because uh, I lost a guy from each on Overwatch on the way in as well. So, just one, so two, know. three, four, five, six, seven bolters. So even though I'm over half range, just bolter yeah, discipline, yeah. it's lots of shots. So that's, uh, that's 14. So, uh... all two ones. Yeah. Okay. And then wounding on uh, fours, you're rolling ones. Just about average that a bit better than average. Don't need the re-rolls. Yeah. And I'll see how many four ups I can make. So that AP minus one discipline. And I have made a fair amount there. Bang on average, but four kills the squad. But that wouldn't have killed the squad. That wouldn't have killed the squad. So back in the day, the squad would have hung around there. But now, he's dead. Right, so, so that's one squad wiped out with one burst of bolt fire, no special weapons needed. So one plasma shot from the uh, regular Crusader, just misses, one from the sergeant, overcharged, just misses. Oh wow. And then the heavy bolter. Uh, two hits. Two hits. Two wounds. Two wounds. So two four ups from the heavy bolter, and that's two. Failed wounds, so that's another two of the Glorious Blood Angels mowed down on their glorious last charge. So I've got four guys left and three up here in cover. Uh, so this squad will do uh, all the bolters into one squad, all the specials into the other squad. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four bolters. Not fire. Which is still eight shots. Two I'm just two wounds, but it's two men in the squad. See if I can get a four up, a one and a four. One guy remains alive. The sergeant with the power axe charging gloriously forward. Uh, combat plasma on the sergeant hits. Uh, this is going into the other squad and yeah, cover, isn't it? Uh, regular plasma hits, just at the same time. Yeah. And then uh, two to wound. 
And that's two wounds because of course you don't get a save. Oh no, I don't get a save because it's AP, AP minus four. <laughs> and I'm two, no, because you're shooting to the other squad. No, no, I'm just, shooting to the yeah, squad yeah. down here. With that Rafa, you're on AP minus four, so you are just cutting down with that second doctrine. That's three doctrine, no command point spent. You just cut down two guys with two plasma shots. Uh, right, so uh, you've got one squad left in cover, yeah. and this lone sergeant charging in. Uh, he will just fire at him. Okay. Uh, rapid fire. Two hits. Two hits. Kills him. Kills him. I uh, still kills him. Yeah. So it's that is AP four, minus again. four, so he's just dead. So you're thinking, oh, what about that six of armor save? Nope, doesn't happen anymore. You don't even get that. No hope. This, uh, I have to say, this codex is a real, you know, if you want to, what's that sort of quote from, uh, quote from Conan the Barbarian, where it's like, uh, you know, to crush. The, hear the lamentation of your en of their women. Oh, yeah. you know, crush your foes before drive them. them before you. Yeah, drive your enemies before you and hear the lamentation of your women. Honestly, this just crushes your spirit playing against this codex. Like it is an absolute sight to behold. But I honestly, like it's it's such a big change. It's so significant. It's mind boggling. You, you know, and I can honestly say at twelve points a marine. You know, everybody out there, please just get your dust your tactical yeah. moves off. I've been saying in all my videos, you know, tactical moves are great. They're not going anywhere. The Games Workshop aren't insane. They love tactical marines just as much as we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a tactical marine convert. You know, I moaned for years about having to take tactical marines because I was so used to having assault marines. I didn't own any tactical marines in my uh, whole Blood Angels collection yeah. until the fifth or sixth edition codex. I forget when we were forced to have them because assault marines were made fast attack. But now I love my tactical marines. I think they're absolutely great. They're really versatile, really tactically flexible, yeah. which is what they're supposed to be. But now they truly are the angels of death. Um, so let's see if we can finish off these last three old fashioned blood angels. Get with the times, boys. <laughs> I was just gonna say, just imagine they moved around, they'd be able to get Okay, I mean, yeah. It's only for the die. So no, uh, rapid fire grav, one, one hit. hit. Uh, um, one wound, wound. And it takes my four, so you're on a six up. Right six up. Five. And we've it's no, I don't, yeah, well, I don't really know. It's mind. not flat on the table. It's a two, of course. Uh, so that's another dead. Plasma, uh, Sergeant. Reroll. Two hits. Two hits. And two that's wounds. two wounds. Two six ups. Two six ups. And nope. that's me. Uh, so I do actually have. A sneaky lieutenant on the back here in cover, but I'm sure Tim can finish him off. And either way, well. Tim's scoring those points. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the firepower of a small marine line. That's what two, roughly, it's bits and bobs, but roughly two squads of marines. Basically two and a half. Yeah, basically two and a half squads of marines. Sort of if you roughly had three not ten-man squads, but all equipped with special weapons. So sort of that's the amount of marines you'd have firepower from a, you know, a battalion where you've kept the tactical moves the troops to a minimum but you've taken it for uh, command points perhaps and maybe got a couple of slam caps in there if you're blood angels you know if blood angels were part of this we don't get the tactical doctrines yeah. but i'm thinking blood angels wise you know if you've taken you know just, you know three squads of five marines with a couple of special weapons in each or you know four you know three squads of ten or whatever you know you'll be putting out an insane amount of firepower Tim has sat there and just blitzed away. He didn't even need the third tactical doctrine. That AP minus one on rapid fire weapons is absolutely brutal. The chaplain's having that flexibility to give yourself a feel no pain on top of everything else. You know, absolutely brutal. I was saying to Tim, if you haven't had that feel no pain, you know, this is Tim's dead pile over here, and it's about 70 marines, give or take. Literally one or two off 70 marines. Probably is 70 now that you killed yourself. Uh, with an overcharged, yeah. overheated plasma. So, you know, without that feel no pain, Tim wouldn't be here anymore. This game would have been very different. This game would have been over around turn two uh, after I'd wiped out half his forces with the death company. But um, that feel, I, you know, you need to take that feel no pain. Really impressed with the chaplain. Mm. Uh, you know, when I first heard, oh, you know, you have to roll a three up to get it, uh, to get the power off, to get the litany yeah. off. I was dreading it. I thought, oh God, I'm going to enjoy my chaplains as much as possible now because I'm going to lose them. You know, I'm going to lose my reliability of that re-roll uh, to yeah. hit in close combat. But having the flexibility, being able to use command point. Well, I think your, your death company actually, as, as we sort of said, they killed everything they charged, they did actually kill. So, death company wiped out 30 guys, I think, yeah. in, the first, so in one round. It was of interesting. Or one 
turn. It was interesting because what the, all the feel no pain actually did, and I was saying this to Johnny, is uh, what it did is actually slow everything down because the death company put out so much damage with shock assault that anything they touch they kill, even when you've got you know, really good durability. Yeah, and the, the sort of hopes and dreams that we all have for Death Company as Blood Angels players, you know, they are true, guys. You know, for those of you who've already played uh, games with your Death Company, yeah. you know, it's absolutely brutal. You don't, you know, you want the power, I'd still say you want a few power swords in there because getting five attacks on the charge with Unleash Rage, you know, if you've got a couple of power swords, a couple of Thunder Hammers, 10 power sword attacks, that's one squad of Marines done. I mean, mm -hmm. I put, what, two Thunder Hammers one power sword, one chain sword, and one squad of ten, and killed eight of them. And then I attacked another squad with the rest, and then you had a squad that was sort of still half alive yeah. for that had been combat with my characters, and they finished that squad off too. So, you know, they killed about 25 marines. Uh, so a couple of power swords can really do some damage, yeah. and it allows you to get those multi-charges off. You know, mass chain swords will hack through any big blob. But mass chain swords with a couple of power swords and thunder hammers, that let you yeah. hack through a big blob and catch an elite unit with your with your blob, you know, multi-charge and wipe <laughs> out the elite unit and the blob. So I'd highly recommend Death Company. You know, I, I, I three squads of 15, I think, will be the new tournament meta. But it's hard to say because, you know, these Marines are so powerful. What are your thoughts? We were discussing, you know, how we thought Terminators were going to be absolutely amazing. I think a lot of people are getting Terminator. excited about Terminators. But there is that caveat that, you know, if you're fighting against another Imperium, if loads of people are all of a sudden taking Marines, which they will do, there's going to be a lot of Imperium on Imperium 30k, 31k style fighting. Your Terminators are then effectively just Primaris Intercessors, aren't they? You know, you've got two wounds and you've got three up save because everyone's shooting at you at minus Terminators one. Are gonna, I think Terminators are going to have to be in cover. You reckon Terminators are going to have to be in cover? Just drop them in, like how you should use them. They'll be effective in the way you should use them, which is to drop them in to reinforce a point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we've said this on both of our channels, but the biggest mistake people make when it comes to Terminators and deep striking is they, they throw them in behind enemy lines. Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't work. You need to, you need to do that. that you know, they need to support a point. Um, sometimes, obviously, there's always exceptions that prove the rule. Sometimes, if you try, if you if, if you've got a point, and you think if I deep strike my turbies over here, there's a good chance my opponent will pull forces away to deal with them. That can work, but by and large, I always say don't think of deep striking as as deep striking. Just think of it as protecting your units. It's flexible reinforcements. Yeah. Like you can, you know, you, it's as I always say when I'm advising how people should assault with blood angels. As you know. You charge forward, and I think this will be particularly viable with the new uh, Marines Codex, is how I'd advise people to use Space Marines. Is to have your mass infantry, you definitely want mass infantry, be absolutely mad not to be taking a decent chunk of actual physical <coughs> Marines in your new, uh, in your new uh, army list. You know, I'd be taking 30 Marines as standard in any yeah. Marine list these yeah, days. Yeah. Absolutely, they are so useful, so versatile. And you know, if you want to take intercessors or whatever, you know, you season to taste, if that makes sense. You have what you want. But long story short, you know, you want 30 marine style bodies in there. You're I not getting away with 15 tactical. You're not 15 getting, scouts. 15 anymore. scouts are long gone. You know, I've put a video, I'm not trying to say, oh, I put a video out this time and I say this on my channel, but people have been abusing scouts in like a Rusty 17, Loyal 32 kind of way. They take the scouts, because they're, they're really good in ITC for hiding in magic boxes because they can deploy forward. And, you know, because you, you can place them wherever you want on the field as long as it's nine inches away from an enemy, give or take, and not in the enemy deployment, I think, or something like that. Uh, I don't use scouts, so I'm not that familiar with the rule. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, your Marines are so powerful now, and you're wasting those doctrines if you're not taking loads of Marines. Well, think... And as you advance, oh, sorry, for the termies, as yeah, you advance, yeah. you know, you're going to lose some Marines on the advance, of course you are. And then instead of deep striking your termies off, like, you know, oh, I'll try to take an objective on this flank or whatever, it's deep strike your termies in to plug the holes in your lines. So those tactical marines just got backed up by guys with storm bolters rapid firing in, rocking some power fists, ready to get a charge off next turn, even if they failed the nine inch that time. Yeah. I think there's two things, I think, to remember in this battle, in this battle report, um, which is, I don't, no, I don't know if this is... is True, but someone told me that the new the new angels of death rule, the combat doctrines, all that you only get that if everyone in your army, bar army, not detachment, mm. 
is Angels of Death. So you can't take Soup and get the Combat Doctrines. Ah. Now that's, that'll be confirmed when the Codex actually comes out. Yeah, and some people do have the uh, the Codex already, but we are one of those channels. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I've, I don't think people have noticed it yet. Yeah, but, but it's I an interesting one. A few one. people say, say uh, like you have to be full Marine to so get it. You can't it. take your Marines, get all your benefits, and think, well, I'll take a couple of Smash Captains in there. No, you can't take a Knight, for example. Or you couldn't take a Knight either. You couldn't. You'd have to be Marine. Oh, you'd, but can you take Blood Angels because they're Angels of Death? Well, they, or don't, would you, get, they don't get access to. Tactical combat. doctrines, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. I don't know. That's a good point. So you may not be able to combine Blood Angels with Marines and make use of the tactical yeah. doctrines. So that you know, there's a bit to be discovered. But and the other thing I was going to say just before I forget is, I know some people will say, well, Black Templars, you know, they're not in, they're not in the new, uh, yeah, they're not in the new Codex. But what you've got to remember is, I'm actually running a worse form of list because I'm paying 13 points for my tactical for my cruci- for my tactical Marines. At 11 points my scouts so that actually balances out you know 12 point per model and I mean mm. even disposition of scouts and, and marines so what you've got to imagine is imagine if for the same price I didn't have a single near fight I had mm. everyone in power armor because so you I can now actually, afford everyone actually, to be in power armor yeah I have disadvantaged myself by taking this list mm. so you know look at it that way yeah, right. But well, I don't think people really care about that kind of thing. Uh, my no. commenters, I've got it seems to have a really nice, sort of, sort really nice set of commenters who always yeah. uh, always have productive things to yeah. say in the comment section. But anyway, yeah. So <coughs> new blood engine, uh, new space marine codex, super super powerful yeah. tactical do- doctrines, as broken as they appear on paper. Essentially, yeah. you know, marines are the new elder. I think what you'll see. Well, is that a controversial statement? I just think that's. I think no. I think it, it's it's it is a, not a controversial. It's a big statement. Yeah. Because Elder have always been king, but I think imagine this army, but it was ultramarines. This is what we were saying before you got the camera. Yeah, yeah. It was a hundred. It was hundred tactical marines, and you've got all the plasma that I have. You've got all the, you know, all the power weapons. You've got all that stuff, except for because you're ultramarines, you always get bait to bolt. So even if you move with your little guys, they, they count as being stationary. Yeah. So. Imagine, you know, Johnny was saying how I don't have a huge amount of firepower and it was taking its toll on him. Imagine if he was facing more than double this firepower. Yeah, exactly. It would just, I mean, the fact that Sheets you would, and the, the, and the one thing that was keeping me in the game was the fact that I was able to tie up certain units with clever charging mm. to make sure that I wasn't feeling the full force of your firepower or yeah. alliteration uh, every turn, which is a classic Blood Angels tactic. If you were facing Ultramarines, you know, you charge into their face, they pull out, and they get AP minus one. I mean, okay, yeah. So you're hitting on minus one, but the trade-off is you've now got AP minus one. So your firepower is basically as good as it always was mm-hmm. with this new codex. Ultramarines are going to be filthy. Yeah. Anyway, it's been an absolute sight to behold. Uh, I'd like to say it's been a pleasure, but it has been uh, somewhere between torture and... Uh, no, I'm joking, Jealousy. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, just uh, four. I mean, I'd... I'd like to say I'm speechless, but I have a lot to say, as you can, you guys yeah. can tell, because we've been going on for about 10 minutes. But, you know, a uh, lot to learn, fascinating, really, really excited to see what they have in store for the uh, Red Thirst, because I think if they've not given Blood Angels tactical doctrines, it's because they've got something in mind, they're probably thinking, the powers that be are thinking, you know, well, they've got Red Thirst, we'll just adjust that rule somewhat. So, you know, really excited to see if this is the power of the Marines, what will be the power of the Emperor's favourite sons, mm. the, so the sons of Sanguinius. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys. Thanks, Tim, for coming along. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you found this uh, battle report interesting and entertaining. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.